I mean, a general question, first of all, um, before we get on to the detail, are the authorities learning? Are the powers of B evolving and changing, do you think? Well, I think that's a great tragedy, that we're, we're mm. not learning, uh, which is out mm. of sync with uh, every pandemic, certainly in, in Australia that we've had. It's yeah. been a learning experience, and we've benefited in the sense that we've gone forward. But um, as you'll see through this presentation, uh, we seem to have stagnated somewhat and perhaps gone backwards. Obtuse is a good word, Robert, isn't it? Uh, it, it covers uh, a, a lot of sins. A, a deliberate refusal to learn. Um, anyway, let, let's let's not start ranting as we could do. <laughs> let's go on no, to your, 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 your <laughs> yeah. Let's go on to your first point. Uh, how good are genetic vaccines? Well, I, I think this is just a, an introductory slide, and it, it mm. identifies the five issues that I, I wanted mm. to talk about. Uh, the first was how good are genetic vaccines. Uh, the second was how dangerous are genetic vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third, which I think is a very important one, is what is the most effective therapy for COVID? Mm. Uh, the fourth, uh, I specifically am interested in the post-COVID vaccination syndrome because, as you'll see from these slides, uh, this is one of the best-kept secrets. Um, mm. I see it very much as the COVID legacy. Uh, it is what society has been left uh, as a result of our interventions. And, and finally, uh, I thought we should look at where we're going and what we haven't learned and the mistakes that mm. we really need to address for the future. Sounds interesting and uh, very beneficial for individuals and, and for society as a whole. Right. Well, this is the first topic, and that is how good are genetic COVID vaccines? And the main points that I wanted to make with this slide was that any vaccine which is injected to prevent or modify the outcome of an inhaled pathogen, a virus or a nasty bacteria, has to fit in with the biology of the whole mm. system. Uh, it has to understand and work with the rules of mucosal immunology. Mm. And what we know from those, and we've known that from 80 years of working with flu vaccines, is that an injected vaccine will not prevent the infection being established in the body. It will not prevent transmission of that uh, infection to other people. Uh, it will not develop herd immunity. Now, we all remember those early years, or certainly in mm. my country, Every night on television, we'd have these so-called experts telling us that, well, you know, we're going to have to have mandates, we have to have lockdowns, because we need to prevent you getting infected, prevent you transmitting the infection, and, you know, we're going to move towards herd immunity. None of those were ever possible, and, of course, they were never attained, because mm. of the biology of the problem. And so... What they do, what a vaccine does is that it puts a wall up between the airway and the rest of the body. And so it prevents the movement of the nasty virus, the pathogen, into getting out of the, the airway into the lungs proper, where the oxygen is taken up and the carbon dioxide is uh, delivered out. And so that represents more severe disease. So what we would expect for any injected reasonable vaccine that does that. It may not prevent infection or its transmission, but it should dull the um, severity of the infection. And we used to monitor that by admission to hospital or death. And indeed, early on, the genetic vaccines did prevent reasonably effectively severe disease for a short time. Mm. Uh, and that was the last point on, on number one, and that is that with any of these protective efforts from an injected vaccine, because of the profound suppression uh, of any type of immune response that's activated in the airways, turning it off, the protection is going to be for a relatively short time, maybe six months, but certainly not like a tetanus vaccine or a measles vaccine lasting maybe 10, 15 or 20 years. Mm. Now, the, the, the second point from this slide, John, is that 
the messenger RNA vaccines in particular were very mm. different to anything we had ever, ever done before. There was never, ever given a reason why we didn't use a traditional vaccine. There was never, ever any evidence that the messenger RNA vaccine was as good as uh, a ground-up virus, the old-fashioned type of virus, uh, which, of course, uh, we know about. We know the safety issues. We know the efficiency issues. Uh, and, and we know the cost. Uh, and this was very, very important. Um, and it's quite interesting that the only study I've actually seen was a recent Korean study in young boys where they compared as a booster uh, the, an antigen vaccine with a messenger RNA vaccine. And guess what? The antigen vaccine was more protective than the messenger RNA vaccine. So even at this level, we now have some data showing that there's no ongoing advantages of using these genetic vaccines. And this is just a huge, huge, huge mystery, isn't it? Why on earth did they go for that, that, that genetic RNA route? There's just... Well, someone made a lot of money. Yeah, there's no question someone made a lot of money, but I've never heard any scientific explanation as to why that was. That, that decision processing is, is decision making is just a complete black box, isn't it? And it's just well, bizarre. I think that's, that's that's the point. And mm. we're still in the position where now uh, there are many people, certainly here, that want to take over and completely transform yeah. our our vaccines into not just the messenger RNA, but the self replicating. You know, it just goes on and on. And yet mm. we haven't sorted out the red flags uh, from the the first round let alone shown they're any better, which they're clearly not. Incredible. And thanks for that really concise uh, explanation, Robert. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it really other, summarises the what we've learned over there. That I didn't mention from this slide, John, yeah. is that when you inject a, a, an antigen vaccine, that is, you know, you grind up the virus and you just yeah. inject it to get protection, you have a very precise small amount of antigen and it stays <laughs> yeah. where you inject it. When you take a messenger RNA, you're not actually injecting the antigen. You're injecting a genetic message that goes, mm. and I think this surprised them, it goes throughout the body and intentionally, potentially infects every cell in the body. Yeah. So that every cell becomes a factory. So the amount well, of... Potential, antigen, potential factory, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Mm. And so the antigen is produced in completely uncontrolled amounts. And as we'll develop the ideas, not controlling the amount of antigen uh, has consequences. Yeah. So, so th there's a fundamental axiom in healthcare when you're giving medicines, of course, give the right dose of the right drug to the right patient via the right route at the right time. And we, exactly. can't, fulfill, we can't fulfill that because we can't give the right dose because we don't know what dose we're going to get. Well, absolutely. And the, the first, yeah. if you, in Immunology 101, yeah. I think we... Some year, a couple of years ago, we looked yeah. at this, John. Um, you draw a, a curve where you get uh, increasing antigen, you get increasing response, and on both ends, small amounts, large amounts of antigen, you get negative immunity. You turn off the immune response. It's the fourth principle. Yep. And, um, you know, and I've not seen anybody, anybody talk about this in terms mm. of the, the COVID vaccine saga. No. And this was, this was all completely clear to you, Robert? Well, it should have been clear to anyone who calls yeah. themselves an immunologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, n n now you've explained it all. It's such basic science, actually. It's, it's completely intelligible and yet ignored by regulatory bodies and senior scientists around the world. It's, um, the word I keep coming to is bizarre, inexplicable. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. you know... Yeah, I think everyone senses the frustration. But they must have known this. They must have known this. And they thought they'd get away with it. Um, yeah. But of course, as time's gone, and you'll see in some of these subsequent slides, uh, the downside of this false uh, way of thinking and the terrible mistakes that they made. Mm. Mm. 